All right, uh, we've got a question that came in from Googly Oogly on YouTubely Boobly. <laughs> nice name. <laughs> How in the world do I change my pencil color in GIMP? A valid question. Hmm. This really put me in my place because it's an honest question where, and it was commented on one of our beginner guides to GIMP. Right. When I realized, oh my goodness. We have never taken it down to the basics. To that simple. Right. right. And, and, I, and I, I say that in absolute recognition of, hey, you've never used it before. How do I, why do I expect that you know this? Right. That's Should like I expect me. that you know Th this? This is me in a nutshell. Yes. Okay. So, so it's almost like we need to have like beginner 101 classes. Well, and this is I beginner ought to teach zero, beginner zero, 101 zero. classes because then I could learn them as I teach them. <laughs> this is good. I just happen to have GIMP 2.10.4 coming up on my laptop. Here it comes. Nice screen. They got rid of they got rid of the uh, wolf though. Is that what he was? I used to. Uh, I thought he was a wolf. I used to love <laughs> seeing that wolf when it loaded. Okay, so let's get right into the very <laughs> very basics. It changes with every version. Jeff. I know, but still. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to create a new file. This is going to give me a canvas to work with. Um, we're working in pixels, and if I want a 1080p file, so say this is something that I'm going to be using as a desktop wallpaper, that's going to be fine, 1920 by 1080. Hit OK, and there is my canvas. Now, you see that it's a little bit of a blue color. That's because my background color is actually this kind of tinted blue. So I'm going to show you how to change your foreground color for your paintbrush and tools like that and your background color. So over here, I'm going to click on the color there. See how I just kind of clicked on the square that's in the background? And I can change my background color to any of the colors of the rainbow. With something like 11.6 million colors, right? Uh, if you have the RGB number, uh, you can enter that up here, RGB. If you have um, the, hexa, uh, the HTML notation, you can enter that here, like white is FFF, FFF. Or if you want red, it would be FF0000, right? Cool. So if you have that notation or if you know that, um, or you can just drag, so find your spectrum here. Remember, I'm working with the background. So if I find, say, some green, and I find like a deep green here, and then I hit OK. Now my background is this deep green color. And if I right click and go edit, fill with background color, now that's the color of my canvas. But what I want to do is I want to actually fill it with white. So let's see if my foreground is white right now. It's not. It's fee, 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 which is just a little bit of a gray white. So I'm going to go see what I did there. I'm just dragging this tool here, right. which takes me right into the corner up here, and that gives me full white. So now if I right click and go edit, fill with foreground color, now it's completely white. So now if I change my background to my foreground and my foreground to my background by clicking on this little arrow up here, now my foreground color is green. And again, I can change that any way I like. So say I want it to be like an orange color. So I can go over here to the, to the spectrum and then bring it up into the orange that I want and then grab my tool which is going to be working with, uh, with the foreground color. So this is a painting tool, but you see that it's quite large. Um, so what I can do is I can actually change the size by dragging here or entering a number. So now watch. See how I've now taken that down to six? So I can change that to be a little more, you know, like a pencil. And there is a pencil tool too. So you can grab that. And it looks like that. And it operates very much the same way. You can change the size, and that will change the actual brush size of your, your pencil. Okay? So I think that that answers the question at hand. The next thing that you'll want to learn how to do, so if I fill this in with white again, uh, so fill with background color now, and then I'm going to select none because I just selected all because I, I do that out of habit. Watch what I can do here. I'm going to go right click and layer and then new layer. And then I'm just going to say, OK, leaving this as a transparency layer. So here's the fill width. We're just going to leave that transparency. OK. Now I have this kind of layer here and I've got my white background layer. So on this empty layer, I can now do my drawing. Okay. 
So I'm not going to actually draw anything. I'm just using a touchpad on my laptop, but just to show you. Now, if I turn off the background layer, you can't really see it, but it's still there. So now what I can do is I can actually change the background color. Let's use something like a, a pink fuchsia and fill that in. And the orange stays, the, stays where it was because it's on its own layer. See that? Ah. So I'm highlighting the layer that I want to work with and then changing that layer however I want. So in a case where, you know, I'm drawing a person or whatever, this is really starting to look like SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> like an evil one. Okay, so say that's what I did. But I, I wasn't happy with it. Now I can actually just turn off that layer or start again. Or, you know, once you've created something where you've got layers upon layers, I think about like you've drawn the body and then you create another layer for the eyes and you're not quite happy with the eyes so you can scrub them out mm -hmm. without right. affecting all the other layers. Yes. If that's what you wanted to do. So tonight we've covered kind of creating our canvas, changing our foreground and background color, plus changing the color of our actual canvas background and creating layers so that we can add things on top of that. Can you have as many layers as you want? You can. You can have an infinite number of layers on the GNU image manipulation program. So here, now if I wanted to make the body separate, I could create yet another layer. And OK. And then start working on the bod. All right. <laughs> yeah, all right. Look at me. I'm an artist. <laughs> Don't know where my daughter gets it from. It is not from me. Uh, so now I can turn off the body layer or I can oh. turn off the head, head layer. And I can, in fact, name these, Sasha, just by double clicking. And I can call this head body so that when I get oh. really going, I don't get confused which is which. Right. So now I can also t do things like, hey, let's fill in that head. So let's use the magic wand, touch it, and then right click and fill with a different color. So let's pick a different color here. Yellow. Let's make it yellow. Because it's SpongeBob, right? Yeah. OK, <laughs> edit, fill, and see what I've done there. <laughs> really, Such really skill. sloppy. I know, I know, <laughs> but there's his head. Right. And his square pants. No, not really. Wow. Not really. But it's about what we learned here, <laughs> not the artisticness <laughs> of my drawings. I thank you. That's the GNU Image Manipulation Program, also called the GIMP. Uh, you can get it for free at GIMP.org. And thanks again to Googly Oogly for calling us on the fact that we haven't really touched on those real basics. I'd encourage you, if you have some basic questions, please send them in to us, and we will approach them um, just like this. And I'll, I'll mm -hmm. gladly, we'll gladly teach you um, what we are able to teach. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's what we're here for. We're here to share what we know. It's Thank all about you. the education. That's it. That's it.